Hello, and in this part two video, I'm going to look at the topic Describe a teenager you know, and you should say who this teenager is, how you know this teenager, what this teenager likes to do, and explain how you feel about this teenager. Hopefully you will notice as I go through the model answer that I haven't really answered bullet point three. I've done this purposely today to tell you that you don't need to answer all the bullet points. And there is a danger if you just start going through the bullet points that your answers are too short and not developed and you're not using enough language. The bullet points are there to guide you, to give you some ideas of what to say. Now it's important you don't go off topic and totally disregard the bullet points and talk about something else, but do not worry if the examiner stops you and you haven't covered all of the bullet points. This will not lower your mark. So let's take a look at the model answer. I'm going to talk about my maternal cousin who is in her mid-teens and has just turned 15 years old. Because my mum and my aunt are extremely close siblings, we have been brought up like sisters. Despite the fact that I'm a good few years older than her, we have a great rapport and get on really well with each other. I know that teens have a reputation for being moody and sullen, and I accept that the vast majority probably are like that. But my cousin is the exact opposite of that. She has a wicked sense of humour and does not suffer from mood swings that most teens are renowned for. We always have a good laugh when we are together because she's so witty. I guess one of the reasons why she is such a happy-go-lucky person and not a typical moody teen is that her parents don't give her lots of rules and regulations to follow. I reckon that if you start dictating to teenagers, then they rebel and misbehave. They make the effort to communicate with her and don't treat her like a child. As I've said, we're a close-knit family and I see her as my sister rather than a distant cousin. I think I was a bit rebellious and challenging for my parents when I was going through puberty. So I really admire the way that she tries to make a joke of everything and doesn't take herself or life too seriously. Her easygoing parents are largely responsible for that because overbearing parents make teenagers want to rebel. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the language I've used in this answer. Now, in my model answer, I try to use as much complex language as possible. And I understand that this is quite hard for you to do in the IELTS test. Just do as much as you can. And remember, I'm a native speaker, so I'm going to use much more complex language. I'm not going to go through every single item in the video. And please don't send me questions about every single item. You can look them up um, and find out online what these things mean. I'm just going to pick out the ones that I think you might not know or the most useful in this answer. So first of all, my maternal cousin. This is my cousin on my mother's side. So my mother's sister's daughter. We also say paternal, meaning father's cousin. So my maternal cousin, my paternal cousin. Remember to not give exact ages. I mean, I have gone on to give her exact age, but in her mid-teens, use things when you're talking about people in his or her mid-twenties, mid-thirties, late-forties, these kinds of expressions. But I have put her age because I wanted to use some good grammar and language. She has just turned 15 and this means she's just had her birthday. Close siblings. Sibling is another word for brother or sister. I often get asked about the discourse markers I use and I use quite complex 
and formal ones, despite the fact that, which means although. The reason for this is I speak quite formally in real life a lot of the time. I don't always say things like, you know, like, whatever. So I would use these in real life and also I'm trying to use them to get you to use them in your writing as well. So instead of using although all the time, despite the fact that. A good few years older. Now this is quite informal and it means quite a few years older. A good few years older. Something to be used in speaking, not writing. We have a great rapport. This is a loan word from French and rapport means relationship and it means we have a good relationship. A reputation is like a name that you or an idea you have about something or somebody and we all think of teenagers being moody so they have a reputation for being moody. Sullen is just another word for moody. The vast majority, and I've used this because this is great for writing, it's great for academic IELTS writing task one, where you're describing a bar chart or a table and you want to say most of them, the vast majority. Now you probably know the expression, a sense of humour, a good sense of humour. This is more complex, more informal, a wicked sense of humour, and it means a really good sense of humour suffer from mood swings. This means that one minute you're happy, one minute you're sad. So your mood is swinging and we call them mood swings and this is often what teenagers suffer from. And here, very good for IELTS speaking part one, describing your hometown. What is it renowned for? So I'm saying most teens are famous for their mood swings. And witty, this means very funny, but in an intelligent way. So not just funny, but says things that are quite intelligent and funny. So very useful for talking about lots of topics when you're describing a person. There are quite a few topics at the moment for describing people. So lots of words and phrases from this topic are useful, such as to have a great rapport, to get on really well with, um, we always have a good laugh when we're together, a wicked sense of humour. These can all be used in the other people topics. A happy-go-lucky person. This is just describing a person who's always happy. We call them a happy-go-lucky person. Rules and regulations. Good for IELTS writing, task two as well. We often just describe rules. We put rules and regulations together. And to dictate to, this means to say, you must do this, you must do that. So you must switch off your phone at eight o'clock. You must not go on the internet after 7.30. These kind of things where you're becoming like a dictator. You're saying you must do this. And when you do this to something, they rebel. And this means they don't do it. So if you say to a teen, don't go on your phone after eight o'clock. They're more likely to go on their phone after eight o'clock because you've said don't do it. And this is called to rebel. And misbehave, any word with miss in the front means wrong. So behave wrongly, behave badly. A close knit family. This describes a family that's very close. So you have a good relationship and you're all close to each other. A close-knit family. A distant cousin is the opposite. It's a cousin you don't see very often. A distant cousin. So we've had the verb to rebel. You've got the noun a rebel. So we pronounce these differently. To rebel. A rebel. And here's the adjective, rebellious. So teens are often described as rebellious. They go against authority. And challenging, this means difficult. Now what happens to teenagers? They go through a process called puberty. 
and we say to go through puberty. And this is when they start suffering from bad skin, acne, greasy hair, mood swings. And it's all because of this phase to go through puberty. But I'm saying she doesn't take herself or life too seriously. So good for other topics of people. She, he doesn't take herself, himself too seriously. Her easygoing parents are largely responsible for good for IELTS writing tasks too as well. Instead of just saying the government is responsible for, the government is largely responsible for. So it's mainly responsible for. Overbearing parents. These are parents who want to control everything and want to know everything and so are checking on your phone every day and are telling you what to do. We describe them as overbearing. So like I said, a lot of language in here, but I wanted to put a lot of language in here because of all these people topics that are coming up. So try to learn lots of words and phrases to describe people. And if it's describe your best friend, describe a teenager, describe a business person, whatever, just use the same language. It doesn't matter if it's true or false. This person I'm describing doesn't exist. You just get as much language in your answer as possible. So make sure you've kept a record of all words and phrases to describe people because it'd be very useful for the IELTS exam. Thanks for watching.